Hi everyone, uh, today we have a new video. We are going to walk through the process of creating a stress constraint for MSC and astronaut optimization. Um, I'll describe the model in detail in just a moment. I'll then go over two optimization problem statements. I'm going to constrain the stress for just one element. And then I'm going to show you a faster method of constraining multiple elements. So to start off with, what are we doing? We have this two-dimensional uh, plate here fixed on one end. There's a point load here at the other end. We are going to let the thickness of this plate vary so that the von Mises stress is below 90,000 pascals. And before I go on, this is part of more advanced training I provide for MSC National size optimization. If you want more training, if you want to partner with me on a project of your own, if you want access to today's web app that lets you construct your design model really quickly, you can contact me at this email address below and I'll definitely get back to you. Now let's go ahead and describe our first problem statement. Our goal is to minimize the weight of this plate and we're going to let the thickness of the plate vary. We're going to say that the von Mises stress of the bottom fiber or the Z1 fiber of element 1 should be less than 90,000 pascals. And now let's go ahead and jump to Patran. And here I just have a plot of the initial results. Uh, you can see this is a two dimensional plate. Uh, here on this end, it's fixed. And here at the bottom right hand corner is where we are applying our point load. Now let's go ahead and open our design model. This design model already has the objective and the design variable statements created. Now what I have to do is create my new design constraints. And so for that, let's go ahead and use our web app. In the web app, click on constraints. Here I'll zoom in and we'll want to look through this list for the stress constraint. So let's go ahead and search for stress. And here, row one is my stress. You can see I can apply stresses for composite properties and beam stresses for those arbitrary beam cross-section ones. But here, I just want the normal stress type. You can click on the plus icon, and this will create your first constraint. Here, this is where I'm going to define my constraint for element one. So I will type in E-L-E-M for this box. And then I will say, this is for element, uh, what element is this for actually? Let's go ahead and view what element number that is. Element three. And do I have this optimization problem statement correct? Nope, let's go ahead and update that. So I'm constraining element three. So we'll type in a three there. And we'll say that the upper bound is 90,000 point. Always remember to include your decimal point there. As for our stress item code, we have to know what the element type is. If we look at our design model, we know that we are using C quad four elements here. So here, let me zoom in and maybe highlight the C quad fours. The item codes that we have to specify here are in the MC Nastron quick reference guide. So let me go ahead and start that up. The reason there are multiple item codes is because there is a normal, normal X stress, there's a normal Y stress, there's a sheer X, Y stress. And so there are multiple item codes we can select here. There's one dedicated to von Mises. So we'll go ahead and go down to chapter six. And in chapter six is where we'll find the item codes for stress. So element stresses. And then we'll have to pick the correct C quad element. Here, if you'll notice, there's a C quad 33. 90, 95, and 144. 90 and 95 are dedicated to the composite and nonlinear types, so we don't have to worry about those. So now, how do we know the difference between 33 and 144? Let me go back to my virtual machine and show my PowerPoint. If in the case control section where you're prompting a stress output, so here's stress. If it says bilin or B-I-L-I-N, if it also says, alternatively, corner, you would be using the 144 version of the element. 
And here, let's go ahead and look at my design model and see what I have. Here I have bilin. So I am using a C quad 144. So let's go ahead and jump back to my quick reference guide. And we'll go ahead and look at the item codes. And again, there's a normal X at Z1. Uh, there's a normal Y at Z1, but we're looking for von Mises of the bottom fiber, which is a Z1. So here I found von Mises at Z1, which is element item or item code 11. So we'll go ahead and keep that in mind now. Back to my virtual machine. In the web app, in this box, the ATTA column, where it's prompting me for a stress item code, this is where I would type in 11. So now I have constrained element three to be within 90,000. And the one value I'm constraining is the von Mises value of Z1, which is item code 11. So now my statements on the right are created. I can copy these statements and move those to my design model. And we'll go ahead and run our optimization now. So we'll go ahead and start NASTRAN. We'll navigate to that directory and perform the optimization. And then here I've experienced a memory issue. So let's go ahead and close some of these tools. Uh, the re reason I had a memory issue is because I'm running a virtual machine and I gave it too much machine, or rather I didn't, I purposely gave it a small amount of memory just so it doesn't bog down the rest of my host machine. So here's my host machine. If I minimize this, we're back to my virtual machine. And let's go ahead and open my F06 results and we'll go ahead and inspect and make sure that there is that message run terminated due to hard convergence. So let's go ahead and look at this. Okay, perfect. Let's go ahead and import my new structural results. So after the optimization, a result file was created that contains the initial results and your final optimization results. So in a moment, we'll go ahead and see what our von Mises values were at the beginning. So let me go ahead and change this to the scalar and I'll view the von Mises stresses for the bottom fiber of design one. Let me go ahead and make sure nothing here is averaged. And here I wanna plot this for the elements. Okay, so here what we're looking at now are the von Mises stress values for each uh, element. You can see that at the bottom right hand element, which is element three, that is where I have my maximum von Mises stress. This is where we impose our one constraint of 90,000 pascals. Let's go ahead and find out what happens after we perform our design or optimization. We find that our new von Mises stress value at this element is now 90,000 pascals. What it was done is MSC Nashton varied the thickness of the plate until the point where our limit was reached at this element. Now let me go ahead and view my PowerPoint again and see if there were, if I had a summary about the results. And no, not just yet. Now the question might be, what if you have a larger plate? What if you want to constrain all the elements for von Mises? I'll show you a faster method of doing this. So let me go back to my design model. And I'll create a duplicate for that. I'll call it maybe this, or model two. In this model, we're going to go ahead and do our second problem statement. Instead of constraining just one element or element three, how do we constrain all the elements at once? So let's go ahead and discuss how to do that. I'll go ahead and start my web app again. And I'll click on constraints. I'll go ahead and uh, click a stress constraint. Before we had this as element one or three is to be within 90,000. And this is for item code 11. 
one other way you can do this is by saying I want to track element 1, 2, 4, 5, 6. And this becomes very tedious at some point. Let's go ahead and delete that. What we will do now is use the p-shell property. The p-shell property, if we look at the model, is the property being used for all of the elements. So here if p-shell 1 is being used by all of the elements. In the property type, we can type in p-shell and we can specify here the property ID, which is 1. This will then assign a constraint for each individual element. If we have multiple P shells, so if in our model we had multiple plates or shell sections, we can then type in P shell 1, P shell 2, P shell 3, P shell 4, if you were dealing with a larger model. Uh, again, these numbers here are the IDs of the P shells. But here I'm only focused on one P shell, P shell 1. And here on the right are my new constraint statements to use. So let's go ahead and copy those. And let's go ahead and open this copy of the design model. I'll replace the old constraints. And we'll go ahead and use these new constraints. And now we'll go ahead and use Nastran to perform the optimization. But before I do that, let's go ahead and close some of these programs just so I have enough memory for this optimization. Again, the reason is because I have a virtual machine running and I purposely gave the machine a small amount of memory just so it doesn't bog down or slow down my host machine. Let's look at the F06 file and confirm we have hard convergence achieved at an optimum. And let's go ahead and view our results now by looking at our PowerPoint. So what are our results? Again, we started off with a thickness of 0 0.01 meters. Our maximum of OMUC stress was at the bottom right hand corner of the plate. It was originally at 87,000 pascals. In our first optimization problem statement, we constrained just this one element. Uh, but as we found a moment ago, I think some of the So we can stream this one, right, right, right. Let's go ahead and see what I have here. And then after that, we went ahead and constrained all of the elements here. And we ultimately ended up at the same thing, but now every, we ended up at the same final design but now every element was included in the optimization process. So every element is now within uh, the 90,000 Pascal limit. And so just to prove it to you, let's go ahead and uh, unattach these old results. And we'll go ahead and attach the new results from the new optimization. And we should find the same results. And we'll go ahead and view our original Vomisi stresses. So here again, we had uh, 87,000 pascals. And now after our optimization, we have 90,000 pascals in this element. And now every element, as before, is within the limit. So that's how you impose a stress constraint if you're dealing with uh, planar elements. In the next video, I'll explain the process for constraining beam stresses. Uh, with that, if you have any questions, if you want more training, if you want to partner with me on an optimization project of your own, if you want access to today's web app that allowed me to create my design constraint, feel free to reach out to me at this bottom email address and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching.